welcome to a tutorial on using Semantic Media Wiki. I'm going to start by showing the dependencies that I'm using. So in the directory where I've set up my files, let's look at the Docker file. The Docker file shows that I'm using three dependencies. The first one being the Semantic Media Wiki extension, version 3.2. That is what allows us to look at the pages as entities, and the entities have properties. So that's where that is being used. The second thing that I'm using is called the semantic results formats. This allows me to perform numerical calculations on the results from the semantic media wiki. So for example, summing all the values in a query. And the last extension that we're using is called the parser functions. Parser functions allows me to do mathematical operations uh, with the keyword expr or if expr. So these are pure numerical calculations. All right, the place then once I've got those installed, then I have to uh, install those, enable them in my local settings it's a PHP file. So at the very bottom, I've enabled my semantic media wiki, sem enable semantic media wiki extension, and then I have to load in the results formats extension as well as the parser functions. So those are configured in local settings. Now we can turn back to the web interface. Um, so the main idea here that we're going to look at is this relation between a bill of materials and the claims uh, based on that bill of materials. I'm going to focus on an example where I have uh, a specific uh, system called this plane. I'm saying that this plane can fly. So the can fly part is the claim, the plane is the bill of materials. So if we look into that bill of materials, it's a pretty straightforward inventory in the sense that I have a plane with two wings, a fuselage, and a tail. Uh, but if we look at the source code for that page, what we see is there are some semantic media wiki specific features in the source code. So if you consider this plane to be an entity, then the properties of the plane are that it has a wing count of two and that it has a component wing. So that's an example of two different types of properties. So when we look back at the source code, has two, there's nothing special that you'd see about that, and wings is a hyperlink. So that's sort of strange that they're both properties, but they have different behaviors when they're rendered. And the reason for that is because we've set the type of the property. If we look at the has wing count, it'll be numerical, and the type of this has component property is type page. So let's look at how we've set that in the special pages. At the very bottom, um, there's a semantic media wiki section of different things. Specifically, we're going to look at the properties page. And on there, uh, let's look at the has wing count as a property. So as I mentioned, uh, we're setting that to two, and it's just saying that this is a number. And if we look back at the uh, as component, that is of type page. Um, so again, we just merely set the type of that parameter of that page. And then that this also happens to show all the places where that uh, property is using as being used. All right, let's go back to the this plane, and then we can dive into each one of those because each one of these entries is itself an entity. So let's look at the engines. So here we can see a, a bit more detail about things that you might want to specify as properties of this. If we look at the edit page again, so here I've created a property called max fuel consumption per hour, and that is a property of type quantity. The difference between a quantity and numerical type is that a quantity is a number with units. So here I'm setting this to be the type, oh, sorry, the property, and then this is the value for that, and it has a uh, type units, gallons. All right, so that's, and the other thing here, you can see that produces max thrust. That's another property, and here it has LBS. If we go back to the source code for this, so the, the rendered version of this, and I hover over LBS, it does some automatic numerical conversion of the units 
because those are linearly related. So that I had to set up um, as a uh, as a feature of the property type for the quantity. All right, so I've talked a lot about um, properties for entities that are all of category equipment. So here I've set up sort of a very straightforward tangible equipment has properties of different types. Next, I'm going to go back to the main page and show you this same concept of entities and properties can be applied to claims. I'm going to focus on the claim can fly. Again, the, the can fly is a claim and it has certain properties. Now here the property is a little bit different. They are constraints on the claim. So rather than being sort of tangible aspects of equipment, like I'm moving 30 passengers a thousand nautical miles. So let's look at the source code for that. Here I have set a, a requirement on the claim that I have 30 passengers. So that's a condition that we'll want to meet uh, in order to show that this claim is valid. And then another one is, for example, I have a range requirement of a thousand miles. So again, that's a constraint on the claim. That's the property that I've set. And again, this can have units. That's pretty convenient. And that's what you were seeing when I hovered over this. It automatically did the unit conversion, just of a nice feature. Now, for each one of this, so this page as an entity is the claim, and it has constraints. And so the way I'm going to address those constraints is by making supporting claims. In this case, if I want to move 30 passengers, I would like to know whether the plane holds a sufficient number of passengers. That's a claim. Let's look at that page. So right now, the cabin has seating for 28 passengers, and so therefore, we don't meet the requirement. And so the claim is false. That's the category of the claim. Let's look at the source code about how we accomplish this. Heads up, it's going to be pretty complicated. So if we look at the source code, the claim has a property, or uh, a referent rather, that uh, it, we're referring to the cabin. That'll become important later. And then we're going to show, um, this is now another semantic media wiki feature, where we're going to use a property from a page. So let's see how that was done. So we're looking at the, the cabin page, and this property has seating for. How does that work? Let's go back to the page here. I'm going to click on the cabin page. And the cabin page, uh, not too surprisingly, it's a piece of equipment and it has um, some properties. So for example, we have a property here for the cabin has seating for 28 passengers. So this is a, a thing that we've set on this property. Uh, it's a, a numerical value. Now let's go back to the, the read page. We want to show whether or not that meets the requirements on the claims page. So let's go back uh, just to show you how I got to the cabin page. Um, it's a subcomponent of this plane. And if you look in the fuselage, one of the components is the cockpit. So that these are all just sort of related in that in the inventory of materials. Oops, sorry. What I meant to say was the cabin is a subcomponent of the fuselage. So that's where we're getting these 28 passengers as a property. Now if we go back again to the claim can fly, and we look at holds a sufficient number of passengers, that's where this condition is coming, this numerical value here is coming from the page property of cabin. And then what we're doing, so let's go back to the source code, so we're basically showing that's where the 28 is coming from. And now we're going to use the parser function uh, if expression. So this is a conditional expression, so we're going to say if that number is greater than or equal to the requirement, so again, this is the can fly claim page, that's an entity, and it has a property, has a passenger requirement. And I remember that, that threshold was 30. So this EF, EXPR, that's comparing 28 greater than or equal to 30, and then the, the true false conditions are, it, if it's true, we'll print the word is, and if it's false, we're going to pre present the word is not. And then, so that's where, and then lastly, the, the number of the claim uh, property is then going to be printed out. Let's go back here again. 
So we're getting this number from the cabin page, and then we're comparing it against the required value, and then we're printing this value conditionally, is or is not. We're going to take that same logic and set the category of the page based on that. So this, this is now um, pretty powerful in the sense of you can categorize pages into category. You can categorize pages and, and set the category based on whether the claim is valid or not. So again, I'm using that same logic I just talked about. I'm drawing from the cabin page and the can fly page. I'm doing a comparison of the two numerical values. And then if it's true, then we've validated the claim mathematically. If it's false, we're going to say that as the category. So let's go back to the read page. So again, the two things that are being conditioned on the logic is is not versus is, and the category is either false or true. So this is already quite cool, but now let's go back to the cabin page and say, you know what, as a design engineer, I'm going to make my, my plane slightly larger. This will have ramifications elsewhere, but I'm just going to change the property of this page. So all I've done right now is I've changed the cabin to have 32 passengers. So let's go back to the, um, the can fly claim. And then I'm going to look at the hold sufficient number of passengers. So now the cabin updated is drawing from that same property page. And we are saying the cabin has seating for 32 passengers. That's new, right? We only changed the property on the cabin page. And then as a result, we can verify that this is greater than the required 30. And so therefore the claim is validated mathematically. That's quite powerful. Now there's a, a bug that I have to work around, which is that that change of category won't take effect until I save the page again. So I have to save this page. Um, now that that claim has been validated mathematically, so we can look, hopefully it's listed, as the claim has been validated mathematically. So that's quite powerful. This is a subcategory of um, claim, and so we can look, look and see what are the other categories of claim. Well, it's either going to be false, validated experimentally, validated mathematically, or more evidence needed. So the category switched based on the build of materials compared to the, the requirements of the initial sort of can fly, can, uh, fly claim. All right, thanks.